Chapter 1176, Intentionally Making Trouble Kawako looked impatient and hurled out toxic remarks. I told you already, have you no sense of shame or something? You're just old trash. I don't even want you as a son. Just grow up and man up, and get the hell out of my face before my partner cuts off your member and feeds it to the dogs. The middle-aged man was so furious that he was trembling. He grabbed the beer bottle on the table and swung it at Kawako's forehead fiercely. Smash. The bottle was smashed and shattered glass pieces, alcohol and blood were scattering about. It wasn't Kawako who got the beating but the middle-aged man. The culprit was Tang Xiao who now stood with a lit cigarette clamped in the corner of his lips while holding a half-broken bottle, with a pale smile. Getting your hands on my woman? Are you tired of living or what? The middle-aged man squatted down and covered his bleeding head as Tang Xiao kicked his face and sent him flying a few meters backward, slamming on a table heavily. The other guests abruptly got up in fright instantly and two timid women let out panic screams, while the falling trays of fruit and beers from the tables created a more chaotic scene. Kawako smiled and acted like a delicate woman. She picked up a beer bottle from the table and slightly observed Tang Xiao's appearance as she ran to the middle-aged man and smashed the bottle on his head. But she covered her eyes with another hand and let out a panic shriek while hitting him. After that, acting like she was a scared rabbit, she ran back to Tang Xiao and hid behind him. Bastard. Damn you. The sudden and unforeseen incident shocked the men at another table. They suddenly sobered up when Kawako hid behind Tang Xiao and then stormed over at them. Bam, bam, bam. Xue Sha and Hei Xiong rushed out of the crowd nearby and sent out powerful punches at these men. At least, the onlookers around thought that they were just powerful and only used simple strikes. Yet, the four men were thrown off their feet and repeatedly screamed. The scene turned more chaotic and drove many people to leave the rest area and ran away to the distance. It took only half a minute before the spot was emptied, save for Tang Xiao's group. All of you, stop. A cultured-looking middle-aged man with glasses in a black waistcoat and gold necklace on his neck rushed over along with four big men in black suites, whereas the waiters in the surroundings surrounded Tang Xiao's group with glaring eyes. Tang Xiao raised his hand to stop Xue Sha and Hei Xiong from beating the four big men. He smiled and looked at the middle-aged man dashing over, his eyes glancing at the signature card on his chest. What's up? You wanna stick your nose? Without looking weak or salty, Tang Xiao spoke in fluent English since he didn't know Japanese. The refined middle-aged man narrowed his eyes and spoke two sentences in Japanese. Upon finding out that Tang Xiao seemed to not understand him, he immediately shifted to English and coldly said, Who exactly are you, mister? This nightclub is under my management and you dare cause trouble in the place under my jurisdiction? Tang Xiao lazily took out another sig as Kawako suddenly came out behind him, gave him light quickly and carefully walked back to hide behind him. Tang Xiao then drew and blew the smoke twice and asked at a moderate pace, What's your name, mister? Oshima. You can call me that, said the man indifferently. Well, Mr. Oshima, I hope you can truthfully reply to the serious question I'm about to ask you. Tang Shou slowly nodded. Pardon, replied the man in a deep voice. What would you do if another man took a liking to your woman and harassed her before your eyes and treated you as if you didn't exist? Asked Tang Shou. I'd kill him. The refined man's answer was exceptionally simple. Tang Xiao immediately took it by face value and forced a smile. Damn. It seems I'm still too soft. No wonder I'm still rather furious inside, it turns out I gotta kill this shit to vent my anger, huh? As his voice faded away, he dashed to the front of that middle-aged man, grabbed his hair, and slammed his face on the table's corner. The man's struggling body softened and his breath gradually faded away along with the brain stuff and blood coming out of his head. Tang Xiao clapped and happily said, Thanks a bunch for your advice, Mr. Oshima. 
It turns out that I can only calm down after killing him. Anyhow, you just asked me why I made trouble in the nightclub under your management, so I'll answer it now. This fella I just killed sexually harassed my woman before my eyes. Do you think my explanation is enough for you? With a chill running down his back and incredulity painting his face, Oshima could only stare at the middle-aged man who had gradually lost his breath. His hands were also stained with murder and he did the deed quite often. Yet, Tang Xiao's action was ruthless and cold-blooded even in his eyes. It was because he had never seen anyone who could still speak so calmly with him with such a happy smile after murdering someone. It was like what he just killed was not a human but rather an ant, or a fry. Secretly drawing a deep breath, Oshima stared at Tang Xiao and said in a heavy voice, Care to share me the name, mister? Don't you know that killing is against the law? Tang Xiao shrugged it off and said, You ask whether I know that murder is against the law? Anyhow, I forgot to tell you that I'm not a Japanese. I don't care how strict the law in your country is, but as long as I can smoothly leave Japan, it's impossible for your country to convict me no matter how powerful it is. Oshima's glaring gaze swept away to Shuesha and Heishong and finally landed on Tang Xiao's face again. He paced two steps backward, waved and shouted, Catch them. Tang Xiao shook his head secretly and helplessly said, No longer shitty nonsense to talk about since you decided to pick us on, huh? Hey, you both take them on and kill these hoodlums who want to bully me. Shue Sha and Hei Xiong drew the Mitsubishi army knives from their waists at the same time. Staring daggers at the four storming sturdy men and all the attendants, they quickly moved and slashed their daggers, causing blood to splatter everywhere. Apart from those four black-suited big guys, a total of sixteen attendants were all heavily injured by the duo in just half a minute causing them to lose their ability to fight and slump on the floor. Tang Xiao watched the disbelief on Oshima's face with a beaming face. He gave him the middle finger and said, Aren't your men rather disappointing? These two men of mine were once the champions of the world-class underground fighting before. You can take out tens of those weak shrimps and dogs and they won't still be enough to take them on. Know your place. And get the fuck out after kowtowing to me else you can expect to have your soul taken. Eyes blurred with a haze, Oshima quickly grabbed the intercom on his waist, pressed a button and shouted aloud, Someone is causing trouble in my sight and tens of our brothers have all been beaten. Hurry up and send support. Copy that. A curt reply was heard from the walkie-talkie. Tang Xiao's brows raised up. He grabbed Kawako's hand and turned back to sit on the sofa, lifting one leg atop the other. With a sig clamped on the corner of his mouth, he leisurely pulled Kawako to his arms and patted her shoulder. Then, he looked at Oshima and said in contempt, You just called someone, right? <laughs> There's no way such a coward like you can summon more powerful men. But then again, I can't just turn over the boat in the gutter since this is your turf, can I? Just bring it on. Call anyone you like and let's have some games and see who can summon more people and whose fist is harder. Fury glittered in Oshima's eyes, but he quickly suppressed it forcefully. After pondering for a moment, he took out a cell phone from his pocket and dialed a number fast. After his call was connected, he respectfully said, Boss, some experts just made a scene in our sight. Also, this guy just ordered his men to catch up so I'm afraid we'll have more people coming over. You can't deal with it yourself? This boss was obviously a bit angry given his bad tone. A restless and anxious look flitted across Oshima's face as he said in a low voice, The tens of brothers who were watching over the site and the four who are always with me got done in by them. That fella himself said that those two experts around him were once the champions of the world-class underground fighting. Hang in there. The man hung up. A few minutes later, all the guests in the nightclub left, while tens of aggressive-looking tattooed big men flooding in with machetes or sticks in their hands. The bald man, who seemed to be their leader, stared at Tang Xiao's group of four with contempt and spoke to Oshima. I already told you that your men are trash, didn't I? Bring them over to the training camp later and I'll drill them well for you. 
You definitely can have them for the drills after this fiasco today, Ozawa, said Oshima with a wry smile. But shall we deal with them now? We're going to have some unforeseen shits if the bunch this fella just called arrives here, no? The bald man called Ozawa stroked his shiny bald head and looked slightly surprised. They also summoned their men? Who the hell gave them balls to take the Inari society as an enemy? Kawako translated their conversation to Tang Xiao as he gently pushed her away to flick the cigarette butt. The butt directly hit Ozawa's bald head and Tang Xiao raised his head after seeing his furious look. Now, now. Let's no rush. Is your Inari society some kind of powerful bunch or something? Why haven't I heard of you before? Ozawa frowned and looked at the Oshima. What the hell is this bastard saying? Oshima translated Tang Xiao's words and finally said, He's too damn arrogant and insolent, Ozawa. Let's just beat them up now and give him a tough lesson. Ozawa nodded and shouted aloud, All of you, unleash everything you got and cripple these bastards. Leave the woman, I'll fuck her before his eyes. Chapter 1177 Pulling a Snake from Its Hole A frosty light flashed in Tang Xiao's eyes as he instantly shot a sharp dagger to Ozawa's throat and accurately pierced it. It was one shot insta-kill. Oshima was horrified. He staggeringly paced back several steps and stared at Tang Xiao in horror. The tens of men Ozawa brought were similarly shocked at this moment, for they never dreamed that their boss would unexpectedly be killed by the other party in an instant. The culprit didn't even stand up and just threw a dagger. What the hell are you gawking for? Kill him. Gritting his teeth, Oshima shouted aloud while guarding against Tang Xiao in case he shot him with a dagger as well. He was crystal clear, today's incident would be blown up out of proportion. It could have been still manageable if it was just the guest who got killed or his men got beaten up, but the death of Ozawa would definitely make this issue bigger and far from over. Tang Xiao narrowed his eyes and apathetically said, Fulfill their wish to die since they've asked for it. Save that Oshima fella for me. It's rather difficult to find someone who can speak English here. I can make use of him to have some trash talk with some others. Hei Xiong and Shui Sha drew their pistols from their waists and aimed the dark muzzles at the tens of big men. Sparks of fire ignited as the duo pulled the triggers and each bullet claimed a soul after it hit each man's glabella. That was literally a massacre, a completely one-sided slaughter. These tens of big men were like wheat getting blown by the north wind. Only less than ten of them were still alive in just a few seconds since Hei Xiong and Shui Sha each brought four pistols and fully emptied their bullets. Run. They are demons. One person among these sturdy men, who suddenly sobered up from the fright due to the massacre, quickly ran and tried to escape from this hellish place. Hmph. Six throwing knives suddenly appeared in Shui Sha's hand. He flicked his hand and threw one of the knives at the man, which pierced the back of his head. He watched as the man's body loudly slammed on the floor and simultaneously threw the other five which stabbed the throats of another five men. At the same time, Hei Xiong dashed forward like a bolt of lightning toward the remaining men. His figure instantly appeared before their eyes and the Mitsubishi army knife in his hand quickly pierced their hearts and slashed their throats. All that was happening didn't make any ripples on Tang Xiao's face. He indifferently said, Well, I hope you're a smart man, Mr. Oshima. Only smart people can live for a long time. Don't even think to run as you can never escape. Come over and kneel before me and we'll wait for the arrival of your reinforcements. I really want to have a look at your boss, that Inari society's head. I wonder what kind of abilities he has. Oshima desperately gulped and looked at Tang Xiao as though he was staring at the fearsome Shinigami himself. He wouldn't have opted to stand up had it not been for his tens of subordinates who were lying on the floor, seriously injured and whining. Despite so, he forced himself to suppress his surging fear to walk forward with shaking legs. What's up? You refuse to kneel? Tang Xiao flipped his eyelids and casually asked. Bam. 
Finally, the man couldn't bear it anymore and knelt in front of Tang Xiao. A pleading look on his face, he tremblingly begged. Please spare me, sir. I'm at fault for everything. I shouldn't have meddled in your business and tried to apprehend you. I promise I'll correct myself. I will. Man, I thought you got some hard iron bones or something. I was thinking of torturing you, yet you directly knelt and desperately begged for mercy? That was unexpected. Tang Xiao shook his head. This is so boring. So damn boring, you got it? Do you know how I wish to see you tasting the feeling to wish for death but unable to have it? I. I'm just a coward and spineless. I just want to live well. But you're a big shot and you don't need to bother about a nobody like me. Just, please just let me off. Oshima desperately knocked his forehead until it was bleeding while kowtowing. Let you off, huh? Dream on. Tang Shou contemptuously said, I won't let you go before your boss comes here. Cuss at him that he's a dog when he comes later and maybe I can spare you. I'll cuss at him. Please believe me, I will. The fear in Oshima's heart subsided a lot after hearing Tang Xiao mention his boss. But he still tried hard to act frightful and beg for mercy. Ten minutes later, a middle-aged man in black casual sportswear and holding a golf club walked through the door along with six sturdy men. His pupils suddenly shrunk after seeing the scene in the dance room. Disbelief and incredulity were all over his face. So, many people, he died? The middle-aged man looked up at Tang Xiao and easily identified him as the leader. He was never a timid man, and without any sign of anger, he came to Tang Xiao's front in an extremely calm manner. He casually threw the golf club to the side and motioned his subordinate to pull a chair as he sat across Tang Xiao, speaking indifferently, the entire capital is quite chaotic now. But I never thought that someone isn't afraid of death and run up here to cause trouble. But well, let me introduce myself. The name is Mine Takino. I'm the head of the Inari Society and this nightclub is one of my businesses. Who exactly are you, mister? And why did you come here to cause this scene? So you say I did all these with no reason at all? Aren't you a reasonable man? asked Tang Shou. The man was stunned for a moment and then immediately nodded. Some facts about my identity can't be revealed, but I think I'm a very reasonable man. If you came here to cause trouble, you can expect to meet your maker here today. But if my men were at fault, not only will I not investigate their deaths, I'll also apologize to you. Tang Xiao gave a thumbs up and praised. Truly an exceptional and extraordinary man, aren't you? You can keep your head cool and rational in this situation. That's quite a rare sight. Well, I'll spare some time to chat with you since you're a reasonable man. I brought my woman to spend our time and money here and we should have been the guests of this place, shouldn't we? That's correct. Mine Takino nodded. You said I'm your guests, but then, another guest who looked at my woman's beauty tried to do untoward things to her. Wasn't it in my rights to act and teach him? Correct, said Mine Takino again. I taught that bastard and his goons a lesson and was about to kick them out. But this Mr. Oshima told me that such bastard who harassed my woman must be killed. I was always weak to provocation, so I killed him directly. Is this also the right thing to do? Mine Takino grabbed the kneeling and desperate looking Oshima at the side asking in a heavy voice, did he speak the truth? Oshima wept and replied, yes. Mine Takino slapped his face and sent him flying a few meters away. Then, he shifted back to Tang Xiao and nodded. You were in the right. I know that, so I did it according to Mr. Oshima's instruction. The issue could have ended then, but this fella unexpectedly acted unreasonably. He took out his men and tried to apprehend me. What would you do if you were in my shoes? You didn't pick on them, yet they were trying to capture you. Is this the right conduct? It's wrong. Gradually understanding the root of the matter, although most of mine Takino's killing intent was aimed at Tang Xiao, 
some of it now shifted to Oshima. Your men wanted to apprehend me, it was just natural for me to resist. Tang Xiao added with a smile. I thought everything was over after these two men of mine got Mr. Oshima's men beaten up since the person I killed was someone who was not one of you. Yet, did he just let it drop? Nope. He actually summoned tens of hoodlums, and even the leader of these ragtag vagabonds wanted to kill me. Don't you think I must fight back since they want to kill me? Mine Takino clenched his fists tightly. Although he was sitting on his spot, his right fist still bombarded toward Oshima, an image of a fist hitting the man's chest and directly killing him. Tang Xiao narrowed his eyes. Oshima himself was a cultivator and quite a strong one at that. Even though he was weaker than Golden Core experts, he was likely able to barely fight on par with experts at the Foundation Establishment stage. You haven't answered me. Should I fight back? Mine Takino drew in a deep breath and nodded. It's within your rights. It's all clear, then. Tang Xiao raised his thumbs up again and said, Now I like you a bit. Anyway, I went on to say to those gangsters who wanted to kill me that I and my men were so scared. After all, it's hard to fight so many with so few men, but we just can't let them kill us like that, right? So my two men took their pistols out and kind of pulled the triggers randomly. That was just some random shots? Mine Takino had just observed the situation of the dead people in the hall and each and every one of them was shot right on their glabella. It was obvious proof that these men were expert marksmen. How could that be claimed as some random shots? And well, things ended up like you just saw here. Do you think we're at fault for the whole incident today? We are not, are we? But since you've come, we had better sit together to sip some tea and chat. We could have struck a deal to cooperate in some fields. But at the end of the day, we have now inexplicably become enemies because of your subordinate. Quite annoying and exasperating, isn't it? Mine Takino took out a cigarette pack and lit one. Then, he spoke, you're right. That was annoying and exasperating. But it was you who was at fault, not my men. Clap, clap, clap. This time, Tang Xiao didn't raise a thumbs up but clapped and said, what extraordinary imposing manner. Truly deserving to be a cultivator, huh? A chilling light flashed in mind to Kino's eyes. He didn't expect Tang Xiao to have found out that he was a cultivator. Suddenly, he inquisitively asked in a chilling voice, Who are you, exactly? Me? Tang Xiao replied, I'm nothing but an honest and cautious plain layman. You know that I'm a cultivator, and I suppose you also know my other identity, don't you? Mine Takino sneered. My guess is, you're from the Joyous Palace. Having said that, he stuffed his other hand in his pocket. He thought that Tang Xiao didn't notice it as he texted a short message relying on his senses and then sent it out. Chapter 1178 Killing Enmity is Better Than Keeping It Alive Kyoto's Suburb A group of swallows flew and the roars of wild animals repeatedly echoed over the vast expanse of a mountain range. The place was the gene camp as well as General Fukuda's stronghold. A cluster of ordinary barracks was built around the mountain with hundreds of thousands of troops stationed in four barracks, while inside the massif was an underground space that was limited to the field of activity of Japanese cultivators and genetic warriors. Inside the secret room, as Kikitagawa held a beautiful sable, he stuffed a jade into its mouth and cracking sounds were heard as it chewed the jade. But the faint aura fluctuating from Kikitagawa's body made the complexions of the two men in the room change. You said General really doesn't have time to see me? Kikitagawa's voice sounded tranquil, but one could feel the coldness hidden within. The two men exchanged glances and the man on the left respectfully said, Sir Kitagawa, General Fukuda fought in Buddha of the Joyous Palace for a long time before. Although Ian Buddha eventually suffered heavy injuries, General Fukuda himself didn't come out unscathed either. He suffered internal injuries and is now recuperating, so he told me that he won't see anyone. 
General Fukuda is a powerful man, yet you said he's just on par with Ian Buddha? Ki Kitagawa grimly sneered. I feel like suffering injuries is just an excuse not to see me. The man hurriedly said, General Fukuda absolutely doesn't have such a thought, Sir Kitagawa. He mentioned you many times and told us that you sacrificed too much for the sake of the country. He also said that you could have been the deputy commander of the Jean camp if it wasn't for the duty you carried out outside. There was no ripple nor change on Kikitagawa's face, but he was sneering inwardly. Although he had been carrying out missions outside, he was crystal clear about the situation in Jean camp, he had even secretly bought several top officials from here. He was well aware that that General Fukuda needed him to keep monitoring the joyous palace and manage some issues. Else, this general who was respected by many people would have stabbed and killed him since he was like a thorn in his eyes. Time is of the essence. As long as I have three years, I'm sure I can surpass General Fukuda and make him hand over this gene camp to me if I oppress him by force then. Ki Kitagawa's eyelids raised and glared at the apprehensive and scared man. He suddenly smiled and said, You seem to have forgotten who the master is while I was away from the gene camp, don't you, Shoujo? In that instant, a frosty light flashed in the eyes of the man on the right. A sharp dagger instantly slashed the neck of the man next to him. He quickly pierced the man's hearts, causing blood to splatter. In just a few seconds, the man on the left was dead. Sir Kitagawa, this shoujo thinks what you said makes sense. This guy not only apparently become General Fukuda's lackey, but he also managed lots of things for him in the back. Some of which also brought disadvantages to you. However, this subordinate kept wiping off some of the traces secretly, so the issue didn't reach you. Shoujo cupped his fist and reported. Ki Kitagawa threw the sable in his arms to the body and let it nibble at it. He then slowly walked to the chair and took a seat, slowly speaking, that old dog Fukuda has always been overly suspicious. I'm afraid this bastard already told Fukuda about some issues I've been dealing with. But Fukuda is seemingly reluctant or doesn't dare to do anything to me. He must keep treating me amiably as long as the joyous palace exists. But the joyous palace will be massacred by us sooner or later, Sir Kitagawa. Shoujo argued. It's very likely that he'll move against you at that time, so we need to prepare ahead of time. I'm well aware of it. But now is not yet the time. Ki Kitagawa nodded and said, Also, the joyous palace has a deep foundation, the whole of which I'm not clear about. You can say General Fukuda is just daydreaming like a moron if he wants to completely exterminate the joyous palace. He couldn't even accomplish anything in the last decade. Ring. A faint ringtone of a cell phone sounded twice, but Kikitagawa's sharp hearing could clearly hear the two notification tones. A short while after, a cold light flashed in his eyes after reading the text on his cell phone. His figure instantly vanished and, a few minutes later, an off-road car sped out of the camp and disappeared on the mountain road. The road itself was narrow, barely enough for two cars. Whoosh! Just as the off-road car disappeared at the end of the mountain road in the distance, a ghostly figure appeared outside the camp's gate. The slightly gray-haired General Fukuda stood straight there with a cold light flashed in his mysteriously bewitching eyes. General. A red-haired man in a black coat and wearing a bronze mask appeared next to General Fukuda. The mask looked rusty, yet it added a mysterious vibe to the red-haired man. Do you know what made him leave this time, said General Fukuda lightly? If my guess is on the mark, it should be related to the joyous palace, replied the red-haired man. Our secret agent reported that he has been wanting to catch the joyous palace saintess. Even before returning to the camp, he dispatched some of his men to go all out to find Gong Wan's traces and news. General Fukuda furrowed his brows and said, What's special about this joyous palace saintess that makes him so fascinated by her? That old bald ass who built the joyous palace has been indulging himself with women literally every day. But why didn't he touch her until now? The red-haired man slowly replied, based on Kitagawa's report, 
that Joyous Palace's master treats her like her daughter. But I feel that it's not a credible reason since that monk already has daughters, two of whom are very attractive and are born bells. Allegedly, this palace master also has some affairs with his own two daughters. Contempt flashed in General Fukuda's eyes as he said coldly, he even devours his own daughters? He's even worse than beasts. The whole of Japan turned stinky and dirty because of him, especially things related to men and women which turned so messy now. But I'm certain the atmosphere in Japan will definitely change when that old bald asshole has been removed. That's probably not an easy task to accomplish, General. The red-haired man wryly smiled. The present situation in the country is still in the status quo. You can change and transform anything if you want to. General Fukuda sneered. People will change as the environment dictates them to. They have to. If it's still useless, you can opt to use bloody means to suppress them, and I'm sure the imperial family will agree with my method as well. The red-haired man didn't reply, but he thought inwardly that General Fukuda was dreaming in his wildest fantasy. The country's condition and the habit of its people were elements that grew along with the growth of countless souls. Using bloody suppression to force transformation in the society would only be like curing the symptoms, and would prove to fail to even touch the roots of the problem. General Fukuda drew in a deep breath and said, Dispatch the first squad out. If you find any sign that Kitagawa betrayed the gene camp, report to me at once. Understood. The red-haired man replied shortly and his figure quickly bolted away. In the dimly lit nightclub, Mind Takino quietly observed Tang Xiao with a calm expression. It was conventional wisdom that continuous victories started from knowing oneself and thy enemies. But in his case, at the present, he literally knew nothing about this young man before him. That was all the reason why he didn't dare act rashly despite being confident in his own strength. Thus, he decided to wait for the arrival of his big boss before making the next plan. He knew what he had to do now was to stall this young man and make him wait here until his big boss arrived. No matter how arrogant and rampant this brat was, kowtowing and begging for mercy before his boss would very likely be the only choice this brat would have at that time. Come again? Joyous palace? What the hell is that? Intentionally pretending to know nothing, Tang Xiao shot a curious look at Mind Takino and asked. You're not from the joyous palace? asked Mind Kakino with furrowed brows. Bah. I just arrived in Japan a couple of days ago, how do I know what shit this joyous palace is? Tang Xiao rolled his eyes and coldly snorted. I just came over to Japan for vacation this time, mind you. I was gonna find my old buddies here and chat about the old days, yet little did I expect to run into this annoying shit luck here. Only now did mine Takino finally realize why this fella never spoke Japanese and always conversed in English. It turned out that he just came to Japan and didn't know Japanese at all. Who is your friend, mister? The man recalled the prior report he received. It was said that this guy was calling someone over. Maybe that person was the one he called a friend. Don't bother. Tang Xiao waved and replied with a downcast face, I got no idea what happened to this buddy of mine. He fooled around with me the other day but just disappeared all of a sudden and didn't answer my calls at all. There's nobody in his place, and not even any traces of his in every place he loves to hang around either. Ah. Uh. There were those two laymen working for him in another site of his, though. But let me tell you, they are a bunch of psychopaths. Killing is like your everyday meal to them, and it's guaranteed that they have done every kind of evil deed you can think of. Make me annoyed and I don't need to act myself, but you can expect to lose your life if I tell them about it. Mind Takino secretly sneered in contempt and suppressed his killing intent inside to stall Tang Xiao and keep him here. Then, he said in a deep voice, how about we drop this matter off since this is a misunderstanding, mister. The Japanese have the custom to hold a party and drink sake after a misunderstanding, to completely close the curtain of the previous clash. Tang Xiao was stunned for a moment and said, we've killed so many of your men, yet you want to drop it off and make peace with me? 
Are you even a man? Mine Takino's lips twitched a few times. He desperately went all out to restrain himself since his killing intent blasted through the roof. He would have attacked Tang Xiao already had he not been wary of the young man's identity and was in the dark about him. It's better killing off an enmity rather than keeping it alive. After spending some time to suppress the urge, Mind Takino finally blurted out with a flushed face. Chapter 1179, Trapped Like a Turtle in the Jar Tang Xiao could tell that Mind Takino's patience had reached its limits after seeing his expression. The chance was high that the guy would storm over if he kept stimulating him. But the chief purpose of coming to this place was to lure a certain snake out of its hole and trap it like a turtle in a jar, before catching it. Tang Xiao didn't want to kill Mind Takino before Ki Kitagawa came so as to avoid the latter noticing that something was amiss, and decide not to come. Killing off an enmity is better than keeping it alive, huh? What a wise saying. Thanks a bunch for the advice and good lesson. Anyhow, I apologize for causing such a big scene here. People say grievances can be settled with wine and a meal, so shall this wine be on my tab for the purpose? Looking apologetic, Tang Xiao patted his chest and spoke. Mind Takino was secretly relieved after hearing this. He was really afraid that this bastard would spit out something he couldn't stand, for fear that he lost his patience and kill him. You came from afar, as a host, it's just natural that I can't let you be the party host, mister. It's all on me. However, please wait for a while for my men to clean up these bodies first. Please. Tang Xiao nested himself on the sofa with a leg atop the other. After swinging his hand, he saw a few bottles of sealed beers lying on the floor next to the sofa and immediately picked up a bottle. He then opened the cap and leisurely drank it. Time passed. The tall and ferocious-looking Kumaji Mogu along with tens of stalwart men flushed into the nightclub in an aggressive manner. Upon seeing Mind Takino directing his men to clean up dead bodies and blood stains on the floor, he instantly shouted as loud as he could in fluent English, Holy cow! Which bastard bullied my buddy? That damn Inari society? Where the fuck is that miscreant head of Inari, Mind Takino? This big daddy will definitely mutilate you today. Mind Takino turned around and furrowed his brows after seeing Komaji Mogu and the tens of men with earrings, bleached long hairs, and dressed in outlandish attire behind the guy. He fiercely shouted immediately, What the hell are you running here for like some rabid dogs? Do you think this place is somewhere you can make trouble or something? <laughs> Who the hell are you? Don't tell me you're that shitty bastard Mind Takino, else I'm gonna blast your balls and cut your fucking head off. After saying that, he seemed to have caught sight of Tang Xiao and dashed towards him, asking aloud with concern, it was all my fault, buddy. To think that somebody wronged you in my country, that was unexpected. I'm really sorry. Please don't get mad. I'm gonna make whoever bully you pay the price. They can report to the Shinigami for all I care. A smile sported on Tang Xiao's face while looking at the subordinate of Kawako. He waved and shrugged and smilingly replied, Well, things been dealt with already, Kumaji. We just killed those who bullied us. Just chill down and bear it, will you? That mind Takino is perhaps bad stuff, but he at least didn't bully me. <laughs> uh... Well, it's not like I hid it from you intentionally, though. It's just, cough. Cough, those who got killed were rather pitiful, so just help them out, Kamaji. They're cleaning the bodies so we can have a meal and drinks here. Kamaji heavily nodded, then waved the machete in his hand and said loudly, You can feel at ease since you didn't bully my buddy. For the sake of God, seeing my friend getting bullied is something very unbearable to this Kamaji, especially when this buddy of mine comes from overseas. Brothers, you heard my friend, right? All right, let's help them deal with the bodies. Take out our secret weapon. Several young men took out a few porcelain bottles from their pockets and opened the cap as a pungent smell immediately wafted in all directions. Kumaji also took out a porcelain bottle and quickly walked over to a corpse. Then, he poured a few drops of the liquid on it. 
BZZT. That body began to melt and turned into a pungent liquid in just a few seconds. Holy cow! What demonic stuff is that? You can melt the dead body just like that? I think I've heard about stuff like this, as in on TV. Awesome. The men undermined Takino were dumbfounded and shocked upon witnessing how a dead body turned into a stinking liquid and couldn't help but exclaim in shock. Even mine Takino himself was shocked by the stuff Kamaji just took out. It was something he had long heard of but never seen until now. Quickly after, tens of dead bodies had been cleaned up. Even the floor was now spotless from any blood stains. Those who were heavily injured had been taken, while tens of mine Takino's men then came over to temporarily serve as waiters. I'm hungry, babe. Sitting on the sofa, Kawako intentionally acted intimately to Tang Xiao and then pushed his hand around her. Her voice was extremely sweet and everyone ten meters away from them could hear it clearly even though her voice was not loud. Tang Xiao patted her shoulder and lightly smiled. I'll tell them to prepare a meal since you're starving, honey. I'm gonna kill them if the taste doesn't suit you. Who do you want to kill, huh? An extremely cold voice came from the corridor of the entrance to the dance room. Then, Kikitagawa strode into the dance room with his hands behind his back followed by four men. His frosty eyes swept over everyone inside and finally landed on Tang Xiao. You look a bit familiar, but I'm sure I've never seen you. Kitagawa spent some time to observe Tang Xiao and was finally sure that this fella was not that young man. He then came to Tang Xiao's front and indifferently said, This is my turf and mine is the one who manages it for me. Yet, you killed many of his men and even provocatively shouted that you're gonna kill mine, huh? Do you think I'm just a fucking nobody here? Tang Xiao rolled his eyes at him and contemptuously said, A desperado? Who and where the heck did you come from, buddy? Is there anything to do with me that mine Takino is managing your business and whatnot? He doesn't even dare to fart before me, so how much better can you be than him, huh? Tell you one thing, mate. Crawl up and scram if you know your place. Else, don't blame me for being merciless and make you at the border of life and death later. What an unbridled brat. Kikitagawa raised his thumbs up and sneered. I hope you got what it takes for acting this arrogant. Tang Xiao pushed away Kawako and got up saying, what do you want? You want to fight? Relying on the fact you're in your turf so you want to bully a foreigner like me? A foreigner? Kikitagawa didn't know Tang Xiao's true identity, but just the word foreigner was enough to make all his wariness vanish. He instantly moved in a flash and slapped Tang Xiao's chest. Any average man would directly die by his slap. Unfortunately, despite his confidence in his palm attack, Tang Xiao's figure moved instantly and avoided it easily. What? Disbelief was all over Ki Kitagawa's face. He didn't sense any aura of an expert from Tang Xiao whatsoever. The young man simply looked like a second-generation nouveau riche, and only those two sturdy men around him as well as some others who just barely entered the cultivation path, although it was just slightly better than nothing in his eyes. Slash Tang Xiao instantly unleashed his divine weapon and cut off Kitagawa's arm the moment he avoided the man's strike, causing Kitagawa's arm to fall on the cold floor. God damn it. Ki Kitagawa's expression drastically changed with a look of dread on his face. His figure instantly retreated backward all of a sudden. Regardless of how low or high his IQ was, he realized that he was very likely to have fallen into a trap that had been carefully set up for him. Who the hell are you, people? Kitagawa furiously roared after quickly sealing up the acupoints on his cut-off arm to prevent the bleeding. A sketch of a smile was painted on Tang Xiao's face as he grabbed the hilt and grinningly smiled. Well, well. We met just a while back, Kitagawa. How can you not recognize me? Is it so easy for others to forget this Tang Xiao? Tang Xiao? Ki Kitagawa shuddered and instantly roared. How cowardly you bastards are, Chinese cultivators. You wanna find trouble with me? 
Tang Xiao let out a thick smile and said, Why bother targeting and making trouble for you? Don't tell me you haven't noticed it? As his voice faded away, flickering figures moved lightning fast in the surroundings and sealed off the entire dance room's exits. The auras exuded by these people were quite powerful, making Ki Katagawa wary and vigilant even though he already knew that Tang Xiao brought some experts with him. You all. Lips shivering, Kitagawa tried to speak, but the words were stuck in his throat. Amit Ba. Blackface Buddha treaded forward a few steps and slowly spoke, I don't care whether you're from the Joyous Palace or the Jean Camp, but you definitely have done some sinister and wicked deeds. You should go straight to hell to confess for your sins and bear the punishment. Monks. A trace of confusion was seen on Ki Kitagawa's face. Never once had it occurred to him that monks would be among these Chinese cultivators. Could it be? Are you guys, from China's Buddhist sect? At this moment, Kiketagawa felt like he had fallen into a glacier hole and was completely terrified. He was once a member of the Joyous Palace and naturally knew its conflict with the Buddhist sect in China. The first rule decreed by the Joyous Palace Master was either to directly run away or fight to the death should they run into the Buddhist sect. It was through this rule that he learned how deep the enmity between both parties was. Tang Xiao clapped and smilingly said, Well, you've been on an undercover mission and lurked inside the Joyous Palace for so many years. Ketagawa. You've been working for General Fukuda as well, so I'm sure you're a smart man. Cast away any thoughts to resist and just surrender yourself. You won't be able to escape since we have set up an inescapable net for you. Chapter 1180 Major Measure Intense despair filled Kiketagawa's whole being as he saw the line of enemies at present. He had secretly sent some spies to investigate the Buddhist sect in China. Although the gathered information was scant, it was very clear that China's Buddhist sect truly had deep heritage and foundation with lots of experts at the helm. And now, even these eminent monks of China's Buddhist sect came to Japan. It was likely that not only would they bring him bad luck, they would also spell big trouble for the joyous palace. Coupled with another faction of cultivators from China who had come to Japan, wouldn't it mean that Japan would likely be turned upside down by these Taoists and Buddhists? Ki Kitagawa drew in a deep breath. He shifted his vision to Tang Xiao and asked, Are you the one who can call the shots here? That's correct. Tang Xiao nodded. I'm the decision maker here. I don't know how you can change your appearance, but I can still determine that you're Tang Xiao, said Ki Kitagawa. I never had deep enmity with neither you nor these eminent monks of China's Buddhist sect since I've never been a true member of the Joyous Palace. Hence, I suppose the only possibility is that you want information from me. Am I correct? Well, it seems my conjecture was spot on. You are indeed quite smart, said Tang Shou smilingly. Then we can have a good chat since what I said is correct. Kikitagawa continued in a deep voice, I'll tell you everything I know as long as you preserve my life. You know, you'll naturally tell everything about the joyous palace since you're a traitor to them. Tang Xiao commented with a smile. It's a pity to you the status of my underling when she was in the Joyous Palace was much higher than yours, so I don't need anything pertaining to the Joyous Palace's situation. Ki Kitagawa's expression slightly changed and he replied with an ugly complexion. You want to know about General Fukuda and the Jean Camp, then? That's right, replied Tang Xiao. Ki Kitagawa took a deep breath and asked seriously, then answer me a question. I'll tell you everything I know about General Fukuda and the Jean Camp as long as you answer it. Do ask. Tang Xiao nodded. With flickering eyes, Kitagawa asked in a deep voice, You said your subordinate status in the Joyous Palace was much higher than mine. I can believe in this one because there are many with higher positions than me like those mistresses and some mysterious experts I never knew about. However, I'd like to know the identity of this person first. It's me. An aquamarine figure flashed and appeared in the hall floating midair. Faintly smiling and holding a rosary in her hand, Yuji came to Tang Xiao. 
she slightly leaned and raised up her head to report. I've sent some people to fully investigate some hidden networks of the Joyous Palace. You only need to command and I can take the men to destroy these hidden sites and then shift the blame to the gene camp. At this moment, another figure floated in from the corridor. It was the veiled Joyous Palace Saintess. Her intelligent eyes quickly landed on Kitagawa and lightly said, Boss doesn't mind letting you know some issues so that you can willingly cooperate with us, Kitagawa. We prepared and did our best to lead you to this place and arranged the encirclement in advance. Not even a fly can escape this place, so you had better tell everything you know. Tang Shou watched Kitagawa, whose expression now changed dramatically. He smiled at him and said, You wanna know more, Kitagawa? If you do, I can satisfy your curiosity. But beware since the more you know, the closer your death will be, so you had better think about it clearly. Kitagawa fell into silence for a long while before silently nodding. Then, he spoke, I'd like to put forward another request. Don't go too far, Kitagawa, interjected Kawako coldly. The man shot a look at Tang Xiao with an extremely solemn expression. Speak, said Tang Xiao indifferently. Everyone I brought here must die, said Kitagawa. You'll have it, but it won't be done now. Tang Xiao nodded. Kitagawa took a deep breath and said, Then do ask anything you want to know. I need details on General Fukuda as well as the gene camp, said Tang Xiao. Tell me everything you know about them. Do remember that the more you tell us, the bigger your chance to live is. The entire night was spent with Kitagawa telling everything he knew. Although it was unknown whether he told everything or not, the information he gave was enough for Tang Xiao. Early in the morning. The morning sky was filled with light rain and the dimly lit world seemed to be unwilling to wake up. Several dark clouds drifted from time to time as though indicating that heavy rain would soon pour tears down on the earth. Let's move. The killing aura emitted out by Blackface Buddha was particularly strong even though he was a monk. Tang Xiao glanced at him and lightly said, Blackface Buddha, you need to restrain and control your killing intent if you want to be an eminent monk who reaches enlightenment. Only then will you be able to break through the barrier of your present realm. This campaign in Japan will likely make you reap more lives, but this is also a good chance to change your mental state and mood. I hope you can grasp this chance and break through the barrier earlier. Blackface Buddha shook his head. You're not from my Buddhist sect, so you have no idea about the Buddhist cultivator's situation. His response made Tang Shou sigh inwardly. He didn't bother to say more since this monk turned a deaf ear to his advice. Then, he clapped his hands, announcing, Everyone, the plan has been devised and completed, so let's take action now. We have eight targets in total, for belonging to the Joyous Palace and the Gene Camp each. Immediately withdraw after you've accomplished your mission and gather at the designated point. Also, do send immediate notice to the nearby team should you face any unexpected situation and wait for the reinforcement while withdrawing. This surprise attack was meant to wipe out the targets. Although it was carried out during the day, it was also the time that a surprise attack would be the least expected to those stationed in these various strongholds. Therefore, it was expected that this blitzkrieg attack to decimate eight footholds of the two parties would be very successful, while the plan itself was also to leave the traces of the Gene Camp's people in the Joyous Palace's sites, and the reverse for the other party's target sites. As noon came, a group of people from both parties strangely came to the decimated and massacred bases. Both sides pointed to each other after seeing the traces left intentionally there. Kyoto Suburbs in the outer ring area of the gene camp, two patrol teams crossed each other, leaving only four genetic warriors in charge of guarding at the intersection as they coldly observed the surroundings. Why do I keep feeling restless and scared, 1183? It's like something bad is gonna happen soon. A genetic warrior suddenly frowned and spoke to his companion at the side. Cut the nonsensical crap, 1184. Do you think you're a woman and got a sixth sense or something? His companion rolled his eyes at him and contemptuously snorted. 
1184 didn't speak again, but his vigilant eyes kept scanning the surroundings so that he could immediately find the slightest sign of disturbance in the surroundings. Nobody knew that it wasn't his first time having such a particular feeling. He had the same sensation several years ago and survived that crisis due to his intuition. Such a sensation appeared again a few years back and similarly saved him as he was able to escape again. This time was the third. Suddenly, he caught sight of a dazzling flash of light in the deep woods in the distance. He would have missed it had he not raised his vigilance at the moment and was very sensitive to the movements around him. Shoo, shoo, shoo. In that instant, he abruptly threw himself to the side. He could feel a slight itch on his back as his back fell against a piece of bluestone. But his unaware three companions had their necks swept over by a sword beam that appeared out of nowhere and were fully beheaded. Tang An's figure flickered and vanished in just two seconds after. She was now wearing the attire usually wore by the mistresses of the joyous palace. She didn't pursue 1184 but shot a frosty glance at him, but it was enough to send a chill to 1184, causing the man to feel like he just fell into an ice hole. That was so close. 1184 didn't dare to move and stayed like that for a long while. As he found out that the mysterious female assassin didn't appear again, he cautiously crawled up and vigilantly scanned the surroundings. He touched his back and felt something slimy. He retracted his hand and then saw that it was full of blood. Enemy attack, save me. Then, 1184 shouted as loud as he could with a hoarse voice. Whoosh. 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 A group of shadows flickered and bolted like lightning from afar and tens of sturdy genetic warriors had rushed over. One of them was a giant man with a nearly two meters long blade in his hand. He scanned around and then shouted, Aren't you 1184? I remember you. I'm 1184, Captain, sir, replied 1184 aloud. It was an enemy raid, a mysterious female assassin. The towering giant waved and said in a deep voice, send the notice and announce that someone is sneaking into our gene camp. And be sure to find her. 1184 hurriedly interjected, Captain, the enemy should be more than one person. I saw some dazzling lights in the deep woods a while back. I could have ended up as these three and killed by that female assassin if I didn't raise my vigilance then. The giant man quickly grabbed the walkie-talkie and, after reporting the situation in this spot, he began contacting the genetic warriors who were on guard duty. What made him furious was that nobody answered his call from the other guard posts. This meant that the enemies had already killed all the genetic warrior sentries on duty. At this moment, two off-road cars came rooming from the outside. The person in the front seat of the car in front opened the window. It was a big man with a golden token who swayed the token and then passed through everyone guarding and quickly entered the inner area of the gene camp. General As the two cars stopped in the square, it happened that General Fukuda just walked out of the building with the red-haired man. Eight masked men got off from the car and paced forward at the same time and saluted him. How come all of you are back now? Where's Kitagawa? asked General Fukuda with a frown. Thank <laughs> you.